In this paper, we design and build a novel virtual reality display that provides unprecedented immersion. Our proposed display improves upon multifocal displays in terms of the ability to generate occlusion cues. Multifocal displays generate virtual scenes by showing multiple focal planes simultaneously at different depths. This enables our eyes to focus on anywhere in the scene, and thereby can produce natural accommodation cue. However, because the focal planes are transparent, the front focal planes are unable to block light emitted by the back focal planes. This means that light emitted from the back can easily leak through a front virtual occluder. The light leakage significantly weakens the occlusion cues rendered by multifocal displays. Let me show you a simple example. In the scene, there is a green dinosaur in the front and a blue grid in the back. We focus the camera on the dinosaur. As can be seen from the captured result, the front dinosaur is unable to block light from the blue grid. This weakens the occlusion cue and reduces the contrast around depth discontinuities. In reality, the front dinosaur can block all the light passing through it, and we can see the dinosaur nicely. In this paper, we enable multifocal displays to generate occlusion cues and retain contrast near occlusion boundaries. On the right is a captured result on our prototype on the same scene. As can be seen, the proposed display successfully prevents the light leakage. Our key idea is that for most scenes, steering the light cone away from the occluder is enough to create the occlusion cue. In the example shown here, all we need is to turn the light cone by a small angle such that no light rays pass through the virtual occluder. Since no light rays can be seen by our eyes through the occluder, we create an illusion that the virtual object can actually block light. Since we are tilting the entire light cone, we call the method cone tilt. More importantly, since we tilt the entire cone, we do not need additional angular resolution. Therefore, we retain the spatial resolution. The capability to tilt the light cone can be achieved by placing a face-only spatial light modulator, or face SLM, directly on the display panel. By changing the slopes of the face function show on the face SLM, we can control the tilting angle of each pixel. Based on the principle, we built a prototype comb tilt display, which is composed of a high-speed DMD projector, a focus tunable lens and its control circuits, and the face SLM. We use two relays to optically co-locate the DMD and the face SLM. Let me walk you through the optical path. The light first gets emitted by the LED, reaches the DMD, get relayed to the face SLM, and finally passes through the tunable lens to our eyes. Let's talk about how we generate content to show on the display and the SLM. Given a 3D scene and its corresponding depth, we decompose the scene into two parts. Foreground and background. The foreground and the background will be shown sequentially within one 3D frame. They are paired with a different face function, and during the display of the focal planes, the face function remains unchanged. Note that the foreground and the background each contains a full sweep of the focal planes, so they are still composed of objects at different depths. The foreground background decomposition helps us deal with the slow refresh rate of our face SLM. Instead of requiring the SLM to refresh rapidly with the DMD in a thousand hertz, it allows us to approximately show a 3D scene with only two face SLM patterns. The foreground contains a pixel that are entirely visible, so it does not need to be tilted, and it is paired with a constant face function. The background contains the rest of the scene points, 
including the pixels that are directly occluded by the foreground, but still can be seen if we move our eye in the eye box. Cone tilt is used on the background to avoid light leaking through the foreground. To see the effect of cone tilt, we first show the captured image before cone tilt. Here is the captured image after cone tilt. For comparison, let me go back and forth. Without comb tilt, with comb tilt. As can be seen, by implementing comb tilt, we effectively prevent the background pixels to emit light towards the chest pieces in the foreground. Note that the entire display, including the content shown on the focal planes and the face function, is independent to the camera. This means that our eyes can focus, move, or rotate freely within the eye box, and the occluded regions will automatically adjust. Now, we compare the results without and with comb tilt. As can be seen, comb tilt effectively creates the occluders in the foreground. Notice that the occluders automatically come in and out of focus as the camera changes its focus. To simplify the synchronization between the DMD and the face SLM, we capture the foreground and the background separately and sum their images in post-processing to get the final results. Compared to a typical multifocal display, the proposed comb tilt display significantly reduces the light leakage from the background and produces occlusion cue. Here is another scene. In this scene, there is a smiley face in the front and a question mark with the text comb tilt at far. In reality, when we move our eyes left and right, we should see that the text reveals and hides behind the smiley face. Here we show the capture result on multifocal display and our prototype. Here the camera focuses on the question mark in the back. As can be seen, the multifocal display is unable to occlude the text. This even creates a false illusion that the text is in front of the smiley face, which is wrong. In comparison, in our prototype, even when the smiley face is defocused, it can still occlude the text in the back. When we focus the camera in the front, our prototype can also occlude the defocused background. Here is another example. In the scene, there is a leaf at 50 cm and the background is at infinity. Here are the rendered reality and captured results on multifocal displays and our prototype. Here we shift the camera between the plus and minus half a millimeter from the center. As can be seen from the third column, the occlusion problem cannot be solved entirely by removing the directly occluded contents behind the leaf. Here is another scene. First, we show the captured results when the camera focuses on the front. Similar to previous results, the Kumto display effectively prevents light leakage from the background. We want to use this result to point out one of the limitations of Kumto displays. As shown in the yellow inset, Kumto displays create dark halo near occluding boundaries and it fails when occluding objects are too close. Finally, we show the captured results when we sweep the focus of the camera.